Good morning, everybody. This is Miss Lucia and Miss Mary Beth from the Sachem Public Library, and welcome to our DIY family program dog and cat toys. Did I say that right? You did. Okay. Very nice. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to be starting off with um, a story called Fuddles. I love the illustrations in the book, they're so funny. All right, Miss Lucia, take it away. All right. All right. We've got Fuddles written and illustrated by Franz Vischer. Read with the permission of the publisher. Right? <laughs> Fuddles was a fat, pampered cat. His family spoiled him and spoiled him and spoiled him. One day, Fuddles realized that all he did was eat, sleep, and visit his litter box. He decided that his life needed adventure. He was ready for a change. He summoned his courage and headed for the door. But mom had other ideas. You're not allowed to go outside, she said. Mom said no? Fuddles could not believe his ears. He had never been told no in his life. Why couldn't he go outside now? The lure of adventure had taken hold of him. He dreamed of scaling soaring mountains and fighting ferocious foes. He was determined to go out. Nothing was going to stop him. To prepare for his grand adventure, he started a strict exercise regime, but not too strict. He practiced climbing, he sharpened his hunting skills, and his claws. One lazy Sunday, Mom told the kids to play outside. This was his chance to escape. Like a cheetah chasing a gazelle, he made his speedy getaway. He hoped Mom wouldn't notice. Once outside, Fuddles got right down to business. He'd show those birds who was boss. But last night's pork chops weighed him down. Fuddles landed in the most disgusting bath he'd ever had. He wondered if anybody ever cleaned around here. Mom always kept his home spotless. As he washed himself, he heard laughter from above. Messes weren't funny. He'd show those squirrels who would have the last laugh. He pushed and pulled and strained and struggled. And then he realized that couches were easier to climb than trees. Perhaps he should have practiced a little more first. Fuddles was worn out. He needed a break from adventure. A short cat nap in the neighbor's yard was in order. Uh-oh. A very short cat nap. Fuddles thought it best not to use his fighting skills at the moment. This dog looked like he meant business. He began to think he wasn't cut out for adventure. He didn't even know how he'd get down from the tree. Crack, whoosh, plop, uh-oh. What a landing. Fuddles tried to get out of there quick, but he found himself stuck. His training hadn't prepared for him hadn't prepared him for this at all. He went up and down and back and forth and up and down again. And then he just went down. He was left a little dizzy and he had an upset tummy. Plus he needed his litter box. He wasn't sure where he was, but he was scared and lonely and he wanted to go home. Nothing around him looked familiar. The only thing he could do was go search for his house and his family. It was getting darker and darker, and Fuddles was getting more and more scared. He missed his family terribly. He hoped that they missed him, too. Plus, his tummy was rumbling. Suddenly, his ears pricked up. What's that noise? It was coming closer. It was his family calling him. Finally, some friendly, familiar faces. He was so happy to see them. Back at home, Fuddles realized that this was truly where he belonged. And all great adventurers deserve to be pampered. The end. So if you can please join me, I will be showing you how to make your very own cat wand using the materials that you have in your curbside pickup bag. In your bag, you're going to have a dowel, ribbons, 
and you're just going to need to get your own duct tape preferably as or well as some. Or any kind of tape? Can they, what kind of tape can they use? Uh, I don't know if scotch tape would work very well. I think we definitely need some duct tape for this mm -hmm. and some scissors. So I'm just going to take the duct tape. Mm, this looks like enough. Have this piece ready to go. We're gonna take the ribbons and line them up with the top of the dowel as best as you can. Get that duct tape. Line it up again with the top of the dowel and put that around. That's where the grown-up help comes in, right? Yes. They may need grown-up help for that, my friend. Definitely. It gets a little sticky, so they might the tape might stick to your fingers. If you need more tape, use more tape to make it more secure. Mine looks pretty secure. And here is your very own cat wand. Now, if you don't have a cat at home, that's fine. You can always give it to a friend that has a cat, or you can always donate it to your local animal shelter. I'm sure that the cats will love it. That's it. And the dogs. Okay. And now, let's go to the dogs. All right. She'll be back. The story I'm going to read is called Excellent Ed. Uh, the story is by Stacy McAnulty and it's illustrated by Julia Sarcon Roach, and it's read with the permission of Alfred A. Knopf. Thank you. All the Ellis children were excellent at something, except Ed, that's Ed. And all the Ellis children were allowed to eat at the table and ride in the van and sit on the couch and use the indoor bathroom, except Ed. Elaine was an excellent soccer player. Ed preferred to carry the ball in his mouth. The twins, Emily and Elaine, El Emily and Elmer, were excellent at math and could add faster than a calculator. Ed could only count to four. One, two, three, four. Four paws. Edith was an excellent ballerina and could twirl on her toes. Ed could twirl, but it wasn't the same. Ernie baked excellent cupcakes. Ed agreed. Maybe if I was excellent, like Elaine, Emily, Elmer, Edith, and Ernie, then I could eat at the table and ride in the van and sit on the couch and use the indoor bathroom, Ed thought. But what was Ed excellent at? Then he got it, breaking stuff. I'm definitely excellent at breaking stuff. Look, broke the bowl, the garbage, everything's all over the place. Ed thought that that should earn him a place at the Ellis family table. But before he could jump into a chair, Elaine zoomed into the kitchen and yelled, I broke the record for the most soccer goals in a season. <sighs> Elaine was better at breaking things than Ed. I must be excellent at something else, Ed thought. Then he got it, losing stuff. Just last week, he lost himself when he wandered out of the backyard. I'm definitely excellent at losing stuff, Ed thought. Ed thought that earned him a ride in the van. But just as he was about to jump in, Elmer shouted, I lost a tooth. Me too, Emily said. Elmer and Emily were better at losing stuff than Ed. I must be excellent at something, Ed thought. Better than Elaine, Emily, Elmer, Edith, and Ernie. But what? Forgetting stuff. He always forgot to wipe his paws, and he forgot that he shouldn't water the rose bushes. And he always seemed to forget that he had just eaten. My dog does the same thing. Ed, you just ate, Dad said. I'm definitely excellent at forgetting stuff, Ed thought. He was sure that that earned him a nap on the couch, but then Edith made an announcement. I'm the new lead ballerina. When I auditioned, I just forgot to be nervous and danced my best ever. Ed whimpered. <laughs> He wasn't even the best forgetter. Maybe I'm not excellent enough to be part of the Ellis family. Just then, Ernie dropped half of his peanut butter sandwich. Ed gobbled it up. Wow, Ed, you are excellent at cleaning the floor, Ernie said. Yes, I'm an excellent floor cleaner. Maybe that's why I don't eat at the table. 
My dog does the same thing, too. Then Emily and Elmer walked in the front door. Ed jumped up and covered them with kisses. Ed, you're excellent at welcoming us home, Emily and Elmer said. Yes, I am an excellent welcomer. Maybe that's why I don't go in the van. Later, the family squished together on the couch, and there was no room for Ed. So he lay across Edith and Elaine's feet. Ed is excellent at warming feet, Elaine whispered to Edith. Yes, I am an excellent feet warmer. Maybe that's why I don't sit on the couch. Ed wagged his tail. He was an excellent Ed Ellis after all. Now if he could just figure out why he wasn't allowed to use the indoor bathroom. The end. But there's something funny I want to show you about this book. These are called the end papers. And on the end papers, it shows Ed wearing a sweater. And he does not look very happy about it. And what's funny is the illustrations show Ed all the ways he is trying. He's wiggling. He's rolling. He's rolling this way and that way. He's upside down. He's still trying. He's wagging his tail. He's on his back. He's on his side trying to get off that, that sweater off. Wait, he's wiggling, he's wiggling. There's the sweater, and there's Ed. I think Ed is pretty clever at taking off his sweater. I love that book. Okay, now we are going to make a do-it-yourself tug toy for your dog, and I need Miss Lucia's help with that. And just like you're gonna need a grown-up's help when you make your tug toy. So in your kit, um, there, each, each tug toy requires three long strips of fabric, these are two inches wide and uh, 36 inches long, kind of a sturdy canvas. And to make the tug toy, you start by tying a knot at the end of one. And I'm gonna show you how to braid. So Miss Lucia is gonna be my helper and you're gonna have your grown-up as a helper. So Miss Lucia, hold one end. And when you braid, you have three long pieces. Now you always braid the outside over the middle one. And you just take turns switching the outside ones over the middle one. So I'm going to start by the outside over the middle, the outside over the middle. Each time you braid, the outside goes over the middle. And you just keep braiding. This is going to make a nice strong kind of a rope. It's almost like making a rope. Just keep braiding the outside over the middle. For any of you grown-ups out there who's braided hair, same thing. Now, you braid all the way up, leave a couple inches at the end, and we're gonna do exactly what we did on the other end, and tie it closed. And you definitely need a grown-up self for this. And pull it nice and tight. Got that, Miss Mary Beth? Yes, all right, you got a tuck to it? So now, whoops, <laughs> she won that tug. So now you have a perfect tug toy for your favorite dog. All right, we have one more game for you to play with us today. Go ahead, Miss Lucia. All right, so we have 15 pictures of well-known cats and dogs from children's books. See how many of them you can name. And at the end of the game, stick around for the answer key if you wanted to know any of the ones that you may have missed. Are you ready? Here is our first picture. Wait, this way, go this, this one first. Oh, oh, you gave it away. Don't look, pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> Start okay. the bottom one. All right, we got this one. Follow the arrow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> is this bloopers or what? <laughs> I think it's funny. Okay. All right, number two. Looks familiar to anybody? All right, number three. Number four. Okay. Number five. Number six. This one's bad. That's a hint. I love giving hints. Oh, I bet a lot of our, some of our older friends know that one. Definitely. This one, I got the mom and dads out there will remember him. 
Okay. Ooh, one of my favorites. Oh, and I think everybody's gonna get that one. <laughs> See, no, this, no, no, this, this could be a little tricky. Who's that? Oh, that could be a little tricky. That's tricky. Okay. All right. I'll give everybody a hint. He's from Early Readers. Oh, you know what? The other hint, because I love giving hints. A famous chef, a famous TV cook, created this character. Ooh. I come from a long line of hint givers. I can't help it. <laughs> Bet everybody knows this one. Uh, I think everybody should know that one. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. How about this one? Mm. Recognize this cat? Okay. From one of my all-time favorite picture books. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> the funniest line of the whole book. Oh, here we got this one. Last one? That's the last one? Yes. Okay. All right, so if you want to know any of those cats or dogs, if you weren't familiar with them, stick around for the answer key. And it was so nice having you with us today. Um, Thank you for, we had fun. Yeah, we had a great we day. We always have fun together, and we hope you had fun too. <laughs> Thanks. All right, bye, bye. everyone.